I don't know about you, but we had a, a wonderful 4th of July. Uh, we went to a couple different picnics, barbecues, and I think the highlight of the day was the fireworks and Trophy Club. Trophy Club always does a nice job with the fireworks. But to some others, the highlight of the day might be a soccer game in the back of the Williams' backyard. Uh, and if you get a chance, the Williams boys will tell you how my wife, the all-world soccer player, schooled me a couple times, <laughs> made me look silly. Um, but we'll talk about that later. Um, it's a great time to take time and think about this country that we live in and the freedoms that we have and the independence that we enjoy. Um, if you've been following the, uh, the soccer World Cup, you know, there's a lot of people out there, it, a lot of patriotism surrounded around our soccer team and a lot of jokes being said about uh, our soccer team and how great we are because we're free. And uh, Alyssa, who gave an announcement, gave our readings, is now in the sermon. If you don't follow her on Twitter, she's very funny. Um, she, she made a joke a couple weeks ago. Why are there no knock-knock jokes about America? Because freedom reigns. Uh, that was funny. Maybe you won't get more followers, I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, freedom. There are no two greater signs of freedom in the world today than the United States flag and the cross. There should be no one in the world who is more free than a Christian American. Because that is the message of Christianity and the message of the United States of America. And I think the, the two greatest documents that have ever been written uh, is the Holy Bible, above and beyond everything else, by a long way, and the United States Constitution, uh, which talks about the freedom that we have as a people. And if you read, uh, um, so I took a, uh, I, I'm part of the Grapevine Rotary Club, and in our club meeting this week we had Constitution Trivia, and I was a political science minor, so I thought I was going to do really well, um, and I didn't. And so I'm going to, just for a moment, we're going to step outside of the sermon and play a little Constitution Trivia to see how much you all know. Um, so, the Constitution states, the preamble says that we the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, uh, establish justice, ensure domestic tran tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity to ordain and establish the Constitution for the United States of America. Uh, it was an incomplete document then because it only included basically white men, has uh, gone on to include more now. But, um, okay, so first trivia question. Who didn't sign the Constitution? I'm going to give you three options. Paul Revere, Thomas Jefferson, John Adams, or none of the above? Paul Revere. Paul Revere? The answer is none of the above. Thomas Jefferson was in France when it was written, and John Adams, I don't know where he was. <laughs> Do you know how many amendments there are to the Constitution? Anybody? 29. 27. Nicely done, Lisa. Okay, now here's the top one. What is the Third Amendment? Part of the Bill of Rights. This is one I didn't know. The, uh, our ability to refuse quartering soldiers, which Hasn't been a big issue these days, but uh, you never know. So and, anyway, so the Constitution talks about our freedoms, and it's, it, the, the, the Constitution came from a place of, of, of people who uh, were saying, we're just, we're going to be independent. We're not going to take it anymore. Um, and so it's a, it's a great document, a living document. But the greater document, the greater living document is the Holy Bible, which talks about our freedom. Uh, John 8:36. Uh, says, so if the Son sets you free, you are free through and through. Galatians 5.1 says, Christ has set us free to live a free life. So take your stand. Never again let anyone put a harness of slavery on you. So these two documents, which as Christians who live in America, both are important to us, both guarantee our freedoms. But what I was thinking about on the 4th of July was, are we really free? 
Are we really free? And I came up with a, a freedom equation, a freedom formula. Three things, I think, to ensure that we are living as free people. Um, and you might disagree with these, and that's okay. But these are my three. The first is courage. The courage to stand up and say, we are not going to take it anymore. And that's what the men who wrote the Declaration of Independence had. They had courage. They said to the king, no more taxation without representation. We are not going to take it anymore. That was a, a, a courageous thing to do. Uh, some would call a treasonous thing to do at the time that they felt it in their soul that it was the right thing for them to do. And so they did. Uh, I think that's what Paul's doing in our Romans reading today, where he says, um, I don't understand my own actions. The things I want to do, I can't do. It's this sinful nature in me that just takes over. I mean, Paul is writing this to a church, to a people. And this is a very humble thing to do, to confess that I am a sinful person. I know the things that I should be doing, but I can't do them. I am, what's the words he says, I am a wretched man. This is a leader of the church coming out and saying, I'm not just a sinner. I am a wretched man. It takes courage to say that to a group of people that, that look upon you as their leader. And so it starts with courage. It starts with admitting that I'm not going to take it anymore. I'm not going to take being a sinful person anymore. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of not having control of myself. So it takes courage and it takes sacrifice. The freedoms that we have today are a gift. A gift that has been passed down from many generations of soldiers. People who have fought for those freedoms. People who have fought all over the world for those freedoms. And men and women who still fight today. People who have, have heard the call of freedom and said, you know what, I am going to volunteer to stand on the border to make sure that the people who live in America remain free. It's, it, they do that as a gift to us. And uh, as we celebrate the 4th of July, it's more than just a bunch of, bunch of men who wrote a document. It's about every man and woman since then who has uh, put themselves on the line for us. But in Zechariah today, uh, the, the prophet writes that, I will come and set you free from the, the water, this pit. This idea that God comes and sets us free. Riding on a colt, riding on a donkey, which points to Palm Sunday, which points to the cross. And on the cross, Jesus' sacrifice has set us free. So that we could be free from the sinful nature that Paul writes about. That's why we start every worship with confession. While we all point, turn to the baptismal font and talk about the, how we say one thing and do another. Because we're all stuck. And that life that Paul was stuck in. The idea that we want to be good people, but it's just so hard to do the right thing. Uh, because it's our nature to want to do what's best for us. So, we need courage. We need sacrifice. But the third thing is, what's the point? We need to be free from something to something. We need to be free. So you can have courage and stand up and say, I'm not going to take that anymore. And someone can sacrifice themselves so that you can be free. But are you really living into that freedom? The thing about America is you are not free to do anything you want to do. We have speed limits. There are certain barriers around things you can do. You can't hurt other people uh, unless you know, you're boxing or whatever. But um, you're, there's limits. But the thing about America is, you may not be able to do anything you want to do, but you can be anything you want to be. You can be anything you want to be. Well, I can't be a jockey, so there, I mean, there's limitations. <laughs> but um, the truth is, anybody from any socioeconomic class, any race, and you can really, you can achieve anything, you can be anything you want to be. If you set your mind to it, and if you're willing to do the work, you can be whatever you want to be. 
The Declaration of Independence says that we are uh, entitled to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And so what that frees you to be is happy. To live a life where you search and find happiness. Where you search and find fulfillment. If there, um, if there is anything that Americans can strive for, it's not success. It's not wealth. It's happiness. And if success and wealth brings you happiness, then strive for those things. If being a stay-at-home mother and working hard just to pay the bills brings you happiness and fulfillment, then that is what you are called to be. Whatever it is that brings you joy. But what's more important is when we look at the death of Jesus and the words that are proclaimed after we forgive our sins that we are free to be children of God. Even though we're sinners, even though we have no right to claim God as our own Father, we can call ourselves children of God. Or not. It's free will. We can walk away from God if we choose. But we are free to be children of God, which means forgiveness of sins, means eternity in heaven. What our gospel about today, that means God is with us now, today, always. That we can cast our anxieties, our stress, our frustrations, our fears, everything that loads us down, that gives us trouble, we can just give it all to God. Because true freedom comes not in realizing that we're independent, but in realizing that we are completely 100% dependent upon God. We can do nothing apart from God. And so we give it all to God, who created us, who forgives us, who died for us, who loves us, who wants nothing but the best for us, and who will take all the junk off of our shoulders and share His load with us, which is easy, and life. I know a lot of you have a lot going on in your life right now. And could really benefit from trading your load for something that is easy and light. And God is there waiting for you to say, I'm ready.